by Jim White Honda. Good evening, everyone. Tyler Segerman here with you from inside the shoe. A lot to digest as I'm still trying to wrap my head around what transpired here today. There's a reason they label these games as rivalries. Michigan and Ohio State embracing that definition to the fullest this afternoon. Senior day in Columbus as Will Howard and company eager to snap their three game losing streak to the team up north. Speaking of, Sharon Moore leading the Wolverines into enemy territory aiming to play spoiler. Following an uneventful opening quarter, the first big momentum swing came off a turnover. Howard fires to the right, but Amir Hall jumps the pass and picks it off his second straight game with an interception, and the return sets up U of M. Two plays later, they would make it pay. Kalel Mullings powering his way through the goal line. Michigan gets on the board and takes a 7-3 lead. Buckeyes offense unable to find much rhythm. Howard injured in this game as well, but he's a warrior and proves that here. Connecting with Jeremiah Smith, the freshman phenom, OSU strikes with 30 seconds to go in the half to even things up at 10 per side. Fourth quarter, we're still knotted up. Wolverines knocking on the door. And check out this play call. Davis Warren faking out everyone. Has a tight end wide open. Jack Sawyer, though, comes out of nowhere and says not today. The senior star taking points away and heads the other way for a pivotal turnover. But again, they were unable to capitalize, so Michigan back with possession. Mullins on the carry, and he'll break free for a huge gain, 116 yards on the day for him and the visitors in business. After bleeding the clock, Dominic Zavada lines up for a chip shot field goal, and with 45 seconds to go, the Wolverines jump on top 13 to 10. So with no timeouts remaining, Buckeyes need to make some magic happen, facing a fourth and long. Howard under pressure, heaves the throw downfield, but it falls incomplete, and for the fourth year in a row, Michigan takes hold of bragging rights. They pull off the upset 13 to 10. Here's Chase Bachman with more from the Wolverines. Tyler, Michigan shocked a lot of people today. Odds makers had the Wolverines as about 20 point underdogs to the Buckeyes, but they came out and played the game they absolutely needed to do in order to win. They won the rushing battle and the defense stepped up and made some huge stops. And so they come away with their fourth win in a row over the Buckeyes. Back to back wins in the shoe for the first time in more than 30 years. No, oh, it's, I mean, <laughs> hard to really put into words how much it means to, to this group. Um, you know, we talk about it, you know, 365 days a year and talked about it since I've been here. Coach Harbaugh started that, Coach Morris kept it going, and this game means everything to us. It means everything, uh, but it really is all about the players. Like I said in the post game, the Mason Grahams, the Kenneth Grants, the Josiahs, the Derricks, the TJ guys, the Miles Hintons, the Josh Preebys, Crippens, Gio, Evan Link, those guys up front. We talked about it all week. It's gonna start up front, and the trenches win the game, and it's not really about scheme. It's not really about you know techniques. It's really about the will, and the will to want to put your man in the backfield or put him across the line of scrimmage, and that's what we preached all week, and that's what those guys did. Sharon Moore is now 2-0 against the Buckeyes as the acting head coach of the Wolverines, and Ryan Day still looking for that first win over the Wolverines since 2019. Noel. With a Big Ten championship appearance on the line, you can imagine the devastation and anger from Ohio State's team, coaching staff, and fans. Coming up short to the Maize and Blue for the fourth time in a row in what is arguably Ryan Day's worst loss as head coach. I mean, everybody, you know, wants to win this game in the worst way, you know, and nobody wants to win it more than we do. And it's our number one goal every year. And so when you don't, you know, do that, you know, there's disappointment and frustration. And so. You know, I don't, I don't blame anybody for being upset. I'm upset, you know, more than, than anybody. And, you know, those players are too, and the coaches and everybody that goes at it. So, I mean, that's, we, we know what we're getting ourselves into here. I can't really speak to everybody else, but I just, I feel like I left, I let you guys down, let all, what kind of nation, you know, I think there's more we could have done. I don't know, but I just could have done more. I don't know. I let you guys down. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry, man. I, I just, I'm blessed to, to have the opportunity to be a Buckeye. And um, I'm sorry I couldn't get this one done. So that's what took place during the 60 minutes of gameplay. After the final whistle, things got a little chaotic. Michigan grabbing their flag and then planting it at midfield. That's the second time they've done that here in a row in Columbus. And uh, obviously a very scary situation and things going K-wire, really. Yeah, Tyler, you and I were on the field at that point. Noel, you were on the field as well. I go after uh, you know the flag. I'm thinking I'm going to get that shot of them planting the flag again like it was in 2022. But instead we see you know players scuffling, you know guys getting shoved, you know punches being thrown. Uh, at one point, you know state police were 
pepper spraying people. You know, I you know saw that, and, and it was just a very chaotic scene. Uh, and it's just very unfortunate that we saw that at the end of what was a really good game. Absolutely. Obviously, a lot of emotion with this rivalry. This is what makes this rivalry so great and so special. But obviously, you don't want that boiling over into physicality and, and emotion. And, and Noel, obviously, you were a part of that as well. What did you see? Well, what I was thinking in the moment when it ended was, first of all, it's such a devastating loss for Ohio State, especially very senior heavy, a lot of seniors coming back to change the narrative of what has transpired the last three years, which was Michigan winning. So at the time, I was filming the seniors doing the alma mater and then all of a sudden they start running the opposite way and I was like what's going on and then before you knew it chaos ensued and you know at one point I saw one of the players with a bloody nose a bloody lip and just everybody just trying to diffuse the situation but it really just escalated really quickly and we heard from both head coaches um, after in the press conference on what had transpired. It, it was emotions on both sides um, on our guys I didn't see they had the flag and guys were waving around and their guys charged us so uh, as much on both sides it can't happen um, so you know rivalry games get heated especially this one it's the, it's the biggest one uh, in the country so we got we got to handle that better yeah I don't know all the details of it but I know that you know these guys you know are, are looking to you know put a flag on our field and our guys weren't going to let that happen so um, you know I'll find out exactly what happened but you know this is uh, this is our field and and Certainly, you know, we're embarrassed with the fact that we lost the game, but, you know, there's some prideful guys on this team that weren't just going to let that happen. So, obviously, a lot of events taking place here inside the shoe, but at the end of the day, Michigan pulls out the victory 13-10 to here in Columbus, their fourth win in a row over Ohio State. For Chase Bachman, Noel Blumel, I'm Tyler Segerman here in Columbus. That's all for sports.